Well, good morning, Kent City Baptist Church. Today is Monday, and I have the privilege of bringing you the pastoral devotional for today. Now, yesterday, Pastor Chris was preaching on Matthew chapter 5, verse 8, which says, Blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. And in my Bible reading, I just recently finished reading through the book of Leviticus. And if any of you have ever tried to read through the whole Bible and start started at the beginning, you know Leviticus can be a little bit of a challenge. One of the big reasons is because the Israelites have left Egypt under Moses and God did the ten plagues, we often call them, or the signs and wonders to deliver his people. And God's desire is to be with his people, to be where they are. And they keep hitting up against this barrier of their sinfulness and their continued rebellion. And the entire book of Leviticus could basically be summed up with saying, what do God's people need to do to stay pure so that they can live near God and in his presence so that God can dwell among them? And it goes on in very detailed ways to talk about animal sacrifices, how the high priests are dressed, how the tabernacle is supposed to be set up and how sacri the sacrificial system works and this is the sacrifice required for sin offering this is for a, a peace offering an offering of thanksgiving and all of these different things and there's all these different regulations that the priests have to go through and it's really interesting that Aaron the high priest he has to do certain things just so he's not destroyed in the presence of God so when we talk about being pure in heart and seeing God and thinking through the lens of Leviticus and what's required, it creates this really sharp contrast between who Jesus is. And so this morning I want to look just briefly at the book of Hebrews, a couple of passages in the book of Hebrews, to consider how has Jesus purified us or cleansed us. In the third verse of Hebrews chapter 1, this is what the author of Hebrews says about Jesus. He says, The Son, Jesus, radiates God's own glory and expresses the very character of God. And he sustains everything by the mighty power of his command. When he had cleansed us from our sins, he sat down in the place of honor at the right hand of of the majestic God in heaven. Now Hebrews 1 verse 3 is interesting because it talks both about how Jesus shows us what the character of God is like, what the exact um, representation of God is or who God truly is. And this goes exactly in line with John 14, 9, where Jesus says, anyone who's seen me has seen the Father. But the other thing that's interesting about Hebrews chapter 1 verse 3 is is that it talks about how Jesus has cleansed us from our sins. And if we want to dig into that a little bit more, we need to turn to Hebrews chapter 9. Listen to verses 13 and 14 of Hebrews chapter 9. It says, talking about the old system of sacrifices, like the book of Leviticus mentions, chapter 9, verse 13, under the old system, the blood of goats and bulls and the ashes of a heifer could cleanse people's bodies from ceremonial impurity. Just think how much more the blood of Christ will purify our consciences from sinful deeds so that we can worship the living God. For by the power of the eternal spirit, Christ offered himself to God as a perfect sacrifice for our sins. Wow. Okay, so if the blood of goats and bulls could temporarily purify God's people from their ceremonial impurity, how much more is Jesus, who's both God and man, completely perfect? How much more does his death on the cross and his shed blood purify our consciences from sinful deeds so we can worship the living God? So when we talk about seeing God, I think the worship of the living God goes hand in hand with that. 
in Matthew, in the Beatitudes, and in Pastor Chris's sermon, it kind of shows us there's this tension. And Pastor Chris mentioned this as well about how one day we're going to see Jesus' face. And so we live in this point of tension. If you feel frustrated by your inability to live like you ought to, to live up to your own standards, or even last week I talked about how God has his perfect wrath, his perfectly righteous wrath against sin. If you recognize your sin, the good news for you is that Jesus makes you pure by him shedding his own blood for our sins. And he's so much better than an animal being sacrificed. And that's why in the Old Testament Leviticus, every single year they had the Day of Atonement, this day where the high priest had to confess the sins of Israel. He had to put his hand on the the head of the animal that was going to be slaughtered and confess the sins of Israel. He had to purify himself. He had to do all of those things. But Jesus died once. And after he cleansed us from our sin, he sat down in this place of honor at the right hand of God because his work is done. So the good news for us is that Jesus purifies us from our sins. And Jesus makes us pure so that we can be ready to see God. And there's a sense in which right now, if we've been cleansed from our sins by our faith in Christ, that we do see God clearly. We see Jesus clearly through the scriptures, through his Holy Spirit dwelling within us. And that's absolutely amazing. But we also look forward to and greatly anticipate the fact that we're going to stand in God's presence. We're going to see God and behold his glory and his beauty and his majesty for all of eternity. And if Jesus hasn't paid for your sins, then you're not ready to see God. And honestly, you don't want to see God. And so this morning, I hope this is an encouragement that Jesus purifies us and that his sacrifice was perfect. And if you believed in him by faith, you will be ready to see God. And hopefully you see him clearly right now, but you're also anticipating how much more clearly you will see him when our eyes aren't dimmed by the effects of sin in our lives and sin around us. And if you're not, Jesus is your only hope. So put your faith in him today and trust in him that he's completed the work the Father gave him to do and see him clearly. My prayer for you is that you will see him clearly and that you will greatly look forward to Jesus' coming back when you will see him in all his glory. And my prayer is that you'll be ready to see him because you'll have been cleansed by Jesus' blood. So be encouraged today. I'm going to sign out till next time. Bye-bye.